Hey guys, Dantix here, back with some more Dragon's Dogma 2 content. This time taking the things you may not know or may not have realized in the game that will help or hinder in the case of the first point. You don't want to miss these, so let's get right into it. All I see in my comments is, this game is too easy, why so damn easy? This doesn't work because the game's easy. Dan, why are you so handsome? Well, I have a solution to one of those problems. The game already has a built-in hard mode. It's called Into the Brine Mode. You see, whenever you get a third and fourth pawn, you throw them straight into the brine. New tank, into the brine. NPC, into the brine. Kidra escorting, into the brine. If you play with only yourself and your main pawn, the mechanics that the devs wanted to come through, come through a lot more. You'll need to understand enemy mechanics, you'll start to see that all the goblins for example aren't the same and attack you in different ways based on their subtype. If you have a healer on your squad suddenly you're lacking the damage. Without a healer you'll really feel it when you take hits. It's a proper hard mode where you'll need to make hard choices. The other benefit is you'll never have to deal with the massive game breaking blowback of Dragon's Plague. You can further increase the difficulty by going trickster and having your pawn be the primary way of dealing damage and hey, if you want an impossible mode into the brine with your main pawn and go solo. It'll get frustrating at times, but at least you don't have to listen to asinine ladder fetishes every 30 seconds. Seeker tokens are annoying to find, but give you some rewards that I'm sure a lot of you want. <coughs> the corset. <coughs> but don't fret, I have an easy way to make sure you're not missing them as you go about your business, because we all know a map guide absolutely sucks the fun out of playing the game. The less than actual secret is unlocking the trickster vocation and getting it to rank 2, which won't take long, just whip it out and let your pawns do all the work. Once you hit rank 2, go back to the vocation guild and unlock the augment called detection. Now whenever you're close to a seeker token or wake stone shards, you'll hear a tone that'll haunt your dreams for all eternity. Make it stop please, I need to do this time quest and can't search right now. It has a large radius so whenever you hear it, start moving around until the tone gets louder. It's directional, so you'll appreciate good speakers or headphones. The best thing about having this augment equipped is that the seeker tokens will pulsate when you get closer, and at night, you can actually see their glow in the distance. Also, make sure you're the mage, sorcerer, or warfarer because levitate is essential to getting most of the tokens. Like, the devs didn't even try to make getting these fair for all vocations. This is an action RPG, Itsuno, not a platformer. So if you're hunting for seeker tokens, do it while ranking up those vocations. No matter what I say, somebody in the comments says, um, Thank you for spoiling that. Hey, Medusa exists. Why would you spoil Medusa? Okay, so you take your sword and use this- Hey, spoiler dude! Did you know you can put items in your story? Spoiler? Well, guys, this will be a minor spoiler regarding not messing up the ending. So if you legitimately want to screw up and have to start a new game plus while missing a whole section of the game, then skip ahead to the next point. But if you want to make sure you get it, which is possibly the best treatment of a true ending I've seen in a game for a long time, stick around. I'll avoid showing anything critical to the story or the final fight. Off you go to the timestamps. But those who remain. Hey legends, doesn't it feel nicer now? I wish I could spend all my time talking to you instead of those delicate idiots. But look, we have a short time together and we're a dying breed. Just know I appreciate you. Okay, so there's a true ending that you simply won't be able to access unless you know how to do it. Finish the game as normal, however when the credits are rolling you can move around, so walk up to the shadowy figure and talk to it. Do it again when it moves. You'll be taken back to a scene you already went through. However this time, climb underneath the thing you're hanging onto, right over the glowing spot. Open your inventory and get out the super special sword and use it on yourself. This will set up a cutscene wherein you'll be thrown back into the world, except everything is changed. Enjoy the true endgame go through it and you'll be able to start New Game Plus. Look, I don't want to make the game any easier for you Giga Chads who find it much too easy and want some kind of Dark Souls experience so you can simulate a sense of achievement from pain, but too bad. There's a way to fully avoid death by Monster Smashy. When your health reaches zero, there's a small window where you can simply open your menu up and use a healing item. You'll get back up like nothing happened. So glue a finger to the start button or exit key and never die again. The loss gauge will still go down so you obviously can't do this forever, but it'll certainly save you using wake stones. 
A lot of you know the scrap store exists and you can use it to create forgeries. First introduced to you when you're tasked with getting a J light orb for two idiots, so why not forge it and make them both happy? Well, I know I keep forgetting this place exists, but you can forge basically anything that's not gear. You can forge fairy stones and wake stones, but they won't work. You can, however, forge Newt Liquor, for example, which will let you finish the quest for the Warfare Evocation easily. You can and absolutely should forge the books you need to finish the Mage and Sorcerer Masteries because you'll want to do them both without the hassle. Copy the Jail Key you get from Grant, just don't copy gems because it will cost you more to make the copy than you'll get from selling it, unless you want to collect them like some kind of magpie. Just remember to remember that this place exists when you get any item. You may have noticed that your valuable section doesn't just have quest items, you have gems. These sell for high amounts but sell for much more at the city that they're scarce in. These are the Jasper, Onyx and Tiger Eye gems. Jasper selling well in Batal, Onyx selling well in Vern Worthless, and Tiger Eye selling well in the Elven Lands. In those locations, you'll get double the value for selling them, so hold on to those gems until you're in those cities, and don't forget you have them. Speaking of items you'll forget about, giving gifts to NPCs will raise their affinity with you, which is a hidden stat. They'll often reward you by visiting your home and dropping off gifts and notes. Many don't realize this, but when speaking to most NPCs, look at the bottom right and press the Give Gift button before the conversation ends. You can usually do this once per day per person. Usually flowers are the way to go, but you can look at the history section of the menu to see what they're into specifically. If only we had this kind of bio in real life, we could access it any time. We wouldn't use it for nefarious purposes, oh no. This might be an obvious one for some, but I was surprised with how many people didn't know this. Traveling around the world can be tedious, so using ox carts to get around will save you a lot of time. In Vermworth, for example, there are two, one going to Melv and one going to Checkpoint Rest Town. From the checkpoint, you can go back to Vernworth or go to Batal and so on. However, they only leave in the mornings, so a lot of people are going to rest at inns, their homes, or sit on benches. You don't need to do that. Just walk up to these signs here and click on wait for ox cart. This will have you wait for the perfect time for it to spawn in the proper place, which doesn't always happen if you're resting on benches, as sometimes the ox cart simply don't load in properly. So get in your ox cart, you can then hit the snooze button and set off in your ox cart and absolutely not wake up to it being destroyed. Speaking of, it seems like there's an over 75% chance, at least from my testing, that your ox cart will be attacked, usually by a boss creature or a ton of little guys. So naturally the most expensive but quickest way to farm experience is by traveling to and from ox carts around the map. You'll be constantly stopped by creatures you can kill, and as long as you lead them away from the cart and stop it being destroyed, you can jump back on, get to your destination, and repeat the process. This will make time pass without wasting your time. So naturally, beasts will respawn in areas you are forced to walk through when the cart gets destroyed. Yes, you'll use 100 to 200 gold every time you travel, but if you're farming, you'll get that back very easily from monster loot and then some. You're also aided by the cart's guards, so lower rank vocations or the trickster will have a much easier and quicker time. Every single perfect monster farm I have seen requires you to wait 7 days or so between killing one single thing, and this method is faster, easier, and has much more variety. If you have the Medusa bow as well, you get tons of extra experience and discipline, or DCP. To find this, you just have to find where Medusa is and, and kill it. I show the location in my Mystic Spearhand video. So give this a shot if you want some variety in ranking up your vocations. And that's everything. Let me know below what you think. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, join my Discord if you want to talk to like-minded people, and leave some love on this video. Thanks for watching, and for everything RPG, you're in the right place. Ciao friends.